Welcome back to Study Topics. This week we're going to be going over traction. Now, if you find this information helpful, let us help you prepare for your upcoming exams. Hi, and welcome to Study Topics. This week we are going to cover some traction scenarios and see what you would do with a patient in this certain situation. So, let's begin. All right, now in this scenario, you are going to perform traction, cervical traction, for a 30-year-old male patient with chronic moderate nerve root compression at the level of C7, C8. He weighs 150 pounds, and this is his first time receiving traction. So I'm going to give you a few seconds to work out that dosage. So I want you to tell me what weight should you be putting in for the cervical traction pull? What angle of pull should you be doing it at? All right, let's review the answer. So if we take a look at our traction dosage calculation, first we want to do cervical traction. So we know we will be using the 20 to 30% of body weight calculation. If we take 150 pounds, that means 30 to 50 pounds. When we're looking at moderate nerve root compression, uh, again, that calculation is appropriate. Now I have changed it into kilograms here because you may have to do kilograms or pounds. Now, I can assure you on the exam, this calculation is going to be simple. It's not going to be something that you need a calculator for, so keep that in mind. Given that it is his first treatment, we want to work at a lower range. So let's start at that 13 kilograms. And given that the level is at C7, C8, we're going to work with a 20 to 30 degree angle of pull. Okay. Now, we're going to go over some adverse or potentially non-adverse situations that arise during traction, and I want to see what your actions would be. So, first step, let's look at a situation where the patient is experiencing increased central pain, but decreased peripheral pain and decreased tingling in the arm. What should you do? All right, now this indicates that there it could be compromisation of the spinal nerve, nerve root, but we know that it's decreasing and we know that in central cases we may see that the nerve or the uh, symptoms may actually centralize. So this indicates that there may be a change in the irritation to the nerve root, so this is good. We want to continue with treatment. Now, let me give you another situation. In this situation, the patient is experiencing decreased central and peripheral pain, but has increase in tingling and weakness. What should you do? Now, when we see that there is a decrease in pain and an increase in neurological signs, we want to stop treatment. Now, remember, neurological, neurological signs could be something like sensory deficits or motor weakness. And this indicates an increase in nerve root irritation, so we would want to stop. This is tricky because technically their pain is decreasing. All right, hopefully those case studies helped you master mechanical spinal traction. <laughs>